Welcome everybody. It is September. Fall is upon us and the stock market is following suit. Did you see it today? Egads. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot and today is Tuesday after the long Labor Day weekend. This is September 3rd. Now you know what I like to do on this show. I like to share with you a hot penny stock I found through the day as I was trading penny stocks. I trade stocks under five bucks every day. And you know where I find them? Anywhere I look. They're on the OTC, the NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange. There's no shortage of penny stocks. But I'm always looking for a hot penny stock. One that has potential to make us money. And you know where I normally find them? Looking at the charts. I can see a lot of charts in a little amount of time. And truth be told, even if I'm reading a news press that seems to be hot news, ultimately I'm going to look at the charts to decide if I want to get into it. Why? because the charts are what matter. So I just start with the charts. I find the chart that looks like it's ready to run for whatever reason. Then I take the time to rummage around through the press releases and the filings of that company, looking for any hot information over the last 30 days. It doesn't have to be fresh. It doesn't have to be big. How big does the wood have to be to make a fire bigger? Doesn't. Just more wood. And that's all we're looking for. So if you can find hot information to match your hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock, like the ones I find and share with you regularly, and I'm doing right now. We are looking at SIFI, ticker S-I-F-Y. This is SIFI Technologies. Now SIFI had a hot day, I guess you could say. She had big news come out yesterday when the market was closed, and this morning, First thing when the market opened up, 4 a.m., it took off. She went from 35 cents up to $1.07 and pretty much stayed up there for a while. But over the whole day, she ended up falling half of what she put on the table. Yes, yeah, she went up about 300% and came down about 150%, which is about 50%. That's normal, folks. When you have a big surge, a big rocket stock pulling the price too far away from all the other SMAs, it's got to come back down. And we're hoping she doesn't come any lower than the halfway point. Anything above the halfway point of the whole surge is the green zone. Most likely, she'll continue to climb. Anything below the halfway point is the red zone. She's most likely going to fall. She is right at that point right now. Now, the chart has more to consider. She had a huge fall starting back in May, and we're going to talk more about that when we look at the filings. But we do have a chart that has heat as far as I'm concerned, and we've got a hot catalyst. That's why we're looking at Siffy. Siffy, she finished today. That ain't right. No. I just looked at the charts, folks. We are up at about 65 cents right now after market. She went up to a buck seven, fell down to 65 cents. I don't know why this hasn't updated. Let's see if I hit my refresh. I don't know. Hasn't been 33 cents since yesterday. So I don't know why that price is up there. So obviously she's up closer to like 140% right now, something like that. And she is a hot penny stock on the major exchange, the NASDAQ. You got to love these penny stocks on the major exchange. You get a lot more benefits. First off, there's no transaction fees. We get to trade for free. Plus, there's a lot more money and a lot more volume on the major exchange. It just makes trading more fun, more profitable. There's a lot more rules up on the major exchange, which just makes it safer for our investments. And you can trade pre-market, after-market, which you never get that opportunity to do with OTC. And that jump this morning, that happened pre-market. And you can get in there and take that. Well, if you're up early enough. So what is SIFI all about? Well, this is a company out of India. We're going to dive on into the most recent press release to get a description for the company. SIFI is a Fortune India 500 company. Ooh. SIFI Technology is India's most comprehensive ICT service and solution provider. With cloud at the core of their solutions portfolio, SIFI is focused on changing ICT requirements of the emerging digital economy and re resulting demands from large, mid, and small size businesses. More than 10,000 businesses across multiple verticals have taken advantage of our unassailable trinity of data centers, networks, and security services, 
and conduct their businesses seamlessly from more than, wow, 1,700 cities in India? That's not a very big country. I thought that would be how many cities we had in the U.S. Who boy. Internationally, SIFI has presence across North America, the United Kingdom, as well as Singapore. Now, I did dive into their website to get just a little more information. I wanted to share with you their partners. Seems to me, if you find a company that has a lot of partners, that says a lot about the company. These sort of companies right here would not be aligning themselves with some scam operation, some little tiddlywink company. Do you see how big these companies are? There are some huge names in there. So this makes me feel good. I see that they're hobnobbing with big name companies who want to make money with this company. They're not there for fun. So everything looks good to me on that regard. Jump on into the news. Now we don't have a lot of news here. A bunch of it is about their quarterly reports. Uh, the last one, the first quarter. I don't see anything here for the second quarter and that should be out any time now. Actually, it's probably late. Speaking of late, we've got a notice here that came from NASDAQ in July. They have been under a dollar since, well, whenever. They've been under a dollar too long. And on the major exchange, you can't go under a dollar and stay under a dollar for too long. It's like going underwater. You got to come up for air sooner or later. Well, they were given a deadline of uh, January 15th, I believe it is, of next year. They have to get the price over a dollar, close over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. Well, they can't diddly squat about that. That's all up to us, the investors. We got to bid it over a dollar, close over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. Now, we can come under a dollar during those 10 days, but we have to close over a dollar. Once we do that, wham, we're out of hot water. We go back under a dollar again and stay under there for too long, we just start the whole process all over. Now, if we fail to do that by January 15th and they don't get an extension, they've got one of two choices. Either get thrown down to the OTC, we don't want that, or do a reverse stock split. We don't want that either. So the best solution is to get this up. And from 66 cents, we could do that. It's not that big of a deal. We've got like 33 cents to go. We have a catalyst, a positive catalyst pushing it. And that dollar is like a negative catalyst pulling it. So I do believe we can hit a dollar pretty bloody easy here. They have changed their CEO. They appointed uh, Sharid Agarawal. If that means anything to you, I didn't see a whole big jump on the chart for it. But change of management can be a big deal. But speaking of big deals, this is our catalyst. This is what came out yesterday. SIFI becomes first in India to achieve NVIDIA DGX ready data center certification for liquid cooling to enable breakthrough AI performance. Jumping into that piece of news, they tell us that the company has become a NVIDIA co-location partner with the NVIDIA DGX ready data center platform certified for liquid cooling. With NVIDIA DGX platform and its supporting infrastructure technology ecosystem, Sci-Fi customers now have access to high-density supercomputing and powerful performance, offered in scalable and flexible AI infrastructure solutions and access through an extensive co-location <laughs> footprint. Sounds like they've got what people want and you can get it easily. A lot of words to say that. As India's first NVIDIA DGX Ready Data Center partner certified for liquid cooling, SIFI offers enterprises a cost-effective solution that helps meet enterprise AI infrastructure requirements. So we've got a catalyst here, folks, that they are launching over in India this new AI cloud business that is going to offer them superiority to everything else they've got right now. That's a big deal. Cloud is huge. AI is huge. And even though India isn't huge, their population is huge. And they do a lot of industry over there, believe it or not. They do a lot of work, especially online. So let's take a look at the relative volume for SIFI today. Really? I am surprised. Over the last 30 days, she's been doing roughly a quarter million shares on the NASDAQ. That's a daily performance. That's under the radar. Today, she did less than 100,000, 97,000 shares. Checking out the share structure, 
Right, they tell us our outstanding share count here is 183 million. Not anymore. This hasn't been updated. This was back in March. We have a filing that came out in May. Actually, this came out in June, but back in May, this stock fell hard. It started to fall and it just kept falling from a buck 55 all the way down to that 35 cents. And she fell with good reason. They put a rights subscription on the market. Rights are like warrants, they're coupons. Now, rights and warrants are stocks. You can get into them, get out of them, just like stock, make your money. They're super cheap, they're penny stocks. But their true purpose is to allow a investor to buy shares at a guaranteed low price. Warrants allow you to buy shares cheap three or five years down the road. Rights allow you to buy cheap shares one or three months in front of you right now. Well, they sold a whole bunch of rights. The company got money, free money for selling these rights, which are going to be converted into new shares. And they sold 250 million rights. They got paid for that, made $30 million. Then those 250 million rights were turned into shares. They got money for that. And now we have 250 million more shares. So we have 433 million shares on the market. Though it doesn't say it here, that's what we've got. Market cap is going to be a lot higher now because our share count is a lot higher. You get that by multiplying the price times the share count. So our price is higher, that's 66, and our share count is higher, that's one. That's 433. So our market cap's going to be a lot higher right now. Taking a look at our financials. Well, doesn't that look brilliant? Outstanding. Everything is growing for the last four years. Remember to put three zeros behind any of these numbers and we're talking millions of dollars. Back in 2021, we were at 332. Year later, 356, 406, 427. We are consistently growing, as are our profits. Starting off at 131, ending in 2024. Well, the last quarter, actually, that's when their, their annual ends, 158 million. Taking a look at, they don't have any quarterlies. No, you normally don't get quarterlies for your major exchange stocks. Take a look at that balance sheet. All right, we got our three zeros to put in over here as well. Looking at what I like to call the bank, they got roughly 55 million in the bank. Assets isn't bad. We're just under a billion at 850 million. And liabilities is less. It's high, but it's less. 562 million. So we are holding positive stockholder equity for us, the investors, of 288 million. So we have got strong revenues growing, we have got profit growing, and we have stockholder equity. See what we've got going on over here at Disclosures. All right, I just showed you one about the rights. They had one here declaring the rights offering, one telling us it was an oversubscription. They made all kinds of money. We got a 6K from the NASDAQ, and then we've got this SC13D. Now this is a little old. Uh, the A tells us it's amended. They had to do something and change it. We see it here too. I'm not quite sure how far it goes back, but it's really interesting. Taking a look at this one. These SC13Ds and SC13Gs are filed when you have a new owner, a new big investor come on board. They buy so many shares that they become part owner. Up at the top here, you see who the new investor is and how much percentage of the company they got. This is 7.5%. You can have more than one listed on these. Now what I've normally seen is if there's more than one, all of those investors are somehow related and connected to each other. You might have the company investing and the owner of the company investing. So I really don't understand what's going on here, but I'm gonna show you what I saw. Here's the second investor, invest, investment capital, at 7.5%, Vegsna family, 7.9%, now watch this, Raju, 84%, look at that folks, Raju Vegsna Infotech, 72%, Ramanand, 68%, what? Infinity Satcom, 76%, wait a minute, 
there's only 100% of stock. We got well over 100% here. You're right, and I don't fully understand this. There is an asterisk next to each one of these, and down here they go into all the information about what those asterisks mean and where the shares are coming from. A lot of these shares came from all those rights going on the market. These people bought the rights, and then they bought shares cheap. And look, this one right here is 329 million shares out of 433 million. So I don't know that this is actually a change of control. I did go through this filing and a couple of other filings searching for change of control. I couldn't find that anywhere. So this may be in-house, but the point here is, is that they invested a lot. They got a lot of these shares, the insiders do, which tells me that our float over here is going to be really low. I don't know what, what it's going to be. I mean, lower than 433 million. If there's 393 there, we could be looking at a float of about 50, 60 million, somewhere around there, quite possibly. So we have a hot catalyst. They're dealing with cloud, uh, AI. They're doing this in India, probably going to be doing it in the US, UK, and Singapore as well. Fundamentals look good. Chart had a run came back down but i think it's in a hot bounce position you don't believe me let me show you and you tell me what you think i'm ready to do some charting now on my free trading platform think or swim feel free to chart on yours we're looking at ticker sify this is sifpy technologies got her opened up to a six month four hour view it was all the way back in December, we had our high of $2.06, and it was midway through July, we hit a low of just about $0.30. Cents. Now, when she dropped off of that high, she came underneath the 200 here, and she had a very strong support here at a buck 27. That's what all these yellow horizontal lines are, my supports and resistances. Feel free to think of them as speed bumps. And just like a car, the price slows down before the speed bump and speeds up on the other side. So I've got a habit of getting out before she slows down and getting in as she's speeding up. That's how I set my trades up. Well, I've got a whole bunch of them here set up on top of the price where she's going to climb going through this, but I don't have any down here, which is actually where she's at. Now, a lot of times I'd use my Fibonacci on this big drop to get them, but I'm going to use this big poke over here to get them. It's just cleaner and easier for me. So after our drop here, going from a buck 60 to a buck, then down to 35 cents, she went sideways, cutting through all the SMAs here, dropping low, coming back up to that 50, going sideways for like another month, dipped lower. Here we go for like two months, and when the 200-day SMA got close, she decided to break out. But it really wasn't about that. It just made it simple to break out. It was that catalyst, that hot news that got her running. We had lots of volume come into the picture. The price soared early in the morning. Look at that, folks, all the way up there, and then back down, and right here, that is the center of that run right that's what i was telling you we'll take a better look at it with the fibonacci but that is the center she came down 150 percent and she has suckled up to it now i really don't care if you're sitting on top of it like a king or if you're hanging underneath it like a monkey as long as you're on that 50 percent mark halfway i'm happy osculators look at that our ppo is going to the moon macd going to the moon RSI was to the moon and back. Looks like it's taking another trip. Everything looks great on our long chart. Let's come on down to our 20-day, one-hour view. Really not a lot to see. She's flat underneath the 200, and we had a big rip. Let's take a look at our 30. Pretty much the same thing, though you're getting a better view of what's going on around that 50% mark. All of our MAs here are climbing, though we've had a pullback on our 20 right there. Osculators are getting weak, but look, right here you can see they're all starting to turn up right now. Things are starting to change. And look at the volume that was here today. Oh my God. Pre-market and all through the day. Dropping down to our 5-day 15-minute. All right, this is a little better. So you can see how flat we were. Nothing was happening for a long time. Very early in the morning, 4 o'clock, boom. Boom. She jumps all the way up, 
comes down to that 50% mark basically and starts jumping around on it. Here come our strong MAs acting like supports. She's fallen underneath the strong support. She could have kept falling. What normally stops it? Another strong support, usually an MA. Well, we've got the 50 day and the 200 here, bounced off the 50, trying to get back up on our 50% mark and it's fallen underneath it and it's starting to climb right now. We got a mixed bag of power here. We've got our 200 haul and our 50 coming down. Those are strong MAs. And we've got our 20 and our nine day coming up. Not so strong. What do our oscillators say? trying to get back on top. We need that blue line on top and climbing. It's trying to do that right now. Let's take a look at our MACD. MACD is also pushing up right now. It has hit the bottom, coming up. Green bars show us that positive strength is building. And our RSI is climbing ever so slightly, but golly gee whiz, it's at 49. I don't like to be under 55, but if it's climbing, Anywhere is okay as long as you're climbing. Let's come on down to that five day, five minute just to get a clear view of what's happening here. So there's your jump, come down, we're underneath the halfway mark, down, falling, falling. Oh, thank God we're saved by the 200 day MA. You can see she's definitely respecting it. She hit it here, she is floating over top of it. While she's doing that, she's crossing those hard MAs that were on her head. There's the 200. Here's the 50, she's just got on top of it. So right here, she is on top of every single MA. All of them are underneath her now. That's the best position you could have. This is a position of breakout. Now what I'm looking for on this chart particularly, folks, is that 200 haul. See how it's blue when it's climbing, purple when it falls? What's the 200 haul? Who asked that? That's a fair question, especially if you don't watch my videos. Most people never talk about the 200 haul. The 200 haul is a cousin to the 200 day MA. They both have the same authority. They both have the same power. But the 200 haul, which takes 200 days of prices and averages them together like the 200 MA, the 200 haul puts more credence on current prices. It actually relates to the price. And what we see is a very special relationship between the price and the 200 haul. The price will use the 200 haul as a friend to push it up the charts. And that normally happens when we get the price on top of the 200 haul and it turns blue. And it turns blue as soon as it goes flat. Look folks, it's trying to go flat right now. It just moved. Yeah, it's a red bar, but all we need is for this purple to go blue and turn up. And I think this is gonna start to climb good. I think we'll get another swell and surge. So I'm liking Sippy, folks. There is news, we didn't go through the whole news. Go ahead and read it. There's a lot more shares now if you wanna read that. She has come down to about 35 cents. She's pushed up to 66, which is where I thought she should have been after the rights. That's about where I figured the price would be. So I'm figuring there's room to grow on the catalyst now on the value of that news. I don't know what it's worth. So we're going to use our supports and resistances. Speaking of, let me show you what, what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take my Fibonacci and I'm going to use that to get my supports and resistances here because I got to know where it's going to go. How can I plan a trade? So I always start at the top so that my lines go up above me, poke the very top of your surge and go to the very bottom. You can also do this with a big drop. All of these white lines are algorithmic supports and resistances, not attached to any historical price point, but are valid. We can trade on them. The price is going to respect them. You can see right there, my 50% mark is right in the middle of all of that. So she is coming up to that 50% mark. If she gets on top of here, she will start working up the ladder through each one of these. And I expect that she will. I expect she's gonna push up to that dollar, which is the price we've gotta to hit to get current on the NASDAQ criteria, right? And we've got a catalyst to meet up with. We've just got back to even from the drop, as far as I'm concerned. This is probably where it should be. Now we're gonna grow. So I'm looking for this to push up to a dollar at least. Use your SNRs to let you know when to get in and get out. Don't be afraid to sell because you're missing money. Take a gain when it's on the table. Right up underneath 
These supports and resistances is where we sell because it could fall back down. When she gets over it, she picks up speed and starts to climb to the next one. So we like to get in on top of them, not on them, up over them and just under them. Love my S&Rs. So do a little more research on SIFI and see what you think. But I'm watching this one tomorrow, guaranteed. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.